Greetings, this is Trev from OnlinePCLearning.com. This is our third video about Automatic. We're looking at an order and inventory system, some very interesting Excel information in here, some wonderful things to learn. So far with our tutorials, we've been able to get our workbook up to the stage where we're filtering all our data. We can choose a year, 2014, and click Filter Data. There's none in there for 2014, let's say 2013. And we say Filter Data and it filters our data. We can then filter by month and by any criteria within that month. We'll choose a customer. Here we're going to choose Sizzler Suits and so on. And we can, of course, clear our data as well. That's where we got up to in our tutorial. Now we're going to have a look at the, and this tutorial really deals with the, perhaps the hardest part of this whole project and that is this order sheet. When an order comes in, we want to transfer that order to the database. And we want to also keep a track of how much stock we're using on of every given item. So here's the order form. I'm going to take you through it a bit at a time to show you how to set it up. Now in our previous tutorial, we put together a dynamic named range for our customers. Our customer list here, it was a dynamic named range that went down here and picked up this information called customer key. We're going to add that here to a drop down list to data validation under customer. Then we want to look up all the customer details. So we'll just pop that in, click on cell G12, go to data and then to data validation. Data validation will open up for you. Choose list, click inside the source box and hit the F3 key and we're going to choose customer key. Click OK and OK. Right, now we have the ability to find all our customers and pop them in here. We can pop in a customer. What we want to do now is look up their details. As soon as we pop the customer in here, we want to look up their details and have them populated into all of these cells down here. Now to do that, we're going to need another dynamic named range. And this time the dynamic named range needs to go from here and it needs to go over here and pick up the information that we need all the way across. So it has to pick up the data in here, in here, and here. In fact, all six columns. So let's create this dynamic named range. This is the last one we'll create in this tutorial. The others I'll show you how to paste them. You'll get the idea from this, how to create a dynamic named range. This is the second time. Remember that a dynamic named range is in fact a formula. So go to the formula tab and choose name manager. Choose new. And we're going to call this customers. Click down the bottom here to clear the box out and type in the offset function. Open brackets, click in our first cell, C6. Three commas because we don't want to offset any rows or columns and then we'll use the counter function and open brackets. Now, we're going to use this information in this range here. No need to reference the whole column. We're just going to use that because that's the list, the length of our customers. Now put a comma after the bracket this time and remember we said that we're going to go for six. I'll just widen this up, six columns wide. So we'll type in the number six because no rows offset but six columns over and hit OK. There's customers, let's see what it picks up for us. It's exactly what we want. It's going to pick up all of that information in there. That's what we need to look up. Now we have that set up, we can go back to our order sheet and we can pop a formula in here, a simple VLOOKUP formula that just simply says equals VLOOKUP, open bracket, hit the F or what is it we're going to look up? The lookup value will be the cell above it there. Hit a comma and then it's going to say what's the table array? Well hit the F3 key and the table array was customers, okay? customers goes in, what column index do we want to look up? Well, it would be index number two, I think it was two, and we want it to be an exact match. So we're going to put zero. So there we go, it's looked it up for us. Top Hat lives at 22 Wendell Street. But now, of course, if we were to take the value out of here, we're going to get an NA error in here. How do we deal with that? Well, we, we just simply repeat the formula and use the 
is an A function in front of it? I'll show you the formula. So here is the formula. All it is is if is an A look up. So that's the function that we use there, the look up function. We're saying that if there's an NA error there, then put nothing. So this is quite simple to understand now when we look at it. It's just simply saying, look it up, and if it's, there's an NA error, put nothing in there, otherwise run the formula. Now, if you're pasting this function in, um, this formula in from the website, just make sure that it does recognize customers there. You might have to type that in or use the F3 key to get the name box up and drop it in. All right, so all we do now, just push the enter key, copy this down, and then all we have to do, we just pull that down, copy it into all of them. So we've got the address here. All we do now is go in and change the index reference in here. So this would be three. I think we get the idea. This would be three. And here it's giving us the information we need. So just do that with the other three as well. In here four, in here three and two and five in there. So when we change now our customer here, it will change his address for us. It will look it up for us. And of course, if we have nothing in here, nothing is going to show up in our formulas as well. That's exactly what we want to happen. Now what we want to do is put cascading data validation into here. Now by cascading data validation, I mean if we look up something in here, a category, we only want that category to appear in the description. So if you've got a lot of products, which you probably will have, you want to break it down so that you can filter it down into just categories. How do we do that? Okay, let's go to the product sheet. Two things we need to do. First of all, for E5, in cell E5, click in there, click into the name box and call this Cascade. Make it a named range called Cascade. Now, this is necessary if you're using 2003, not necessary if you're using 2010 or 13, uh, but if you're using 2003 or 7, then you would have to have a named range here. So uh, we'll put it in just to be safe. So we make that cascade, and then we want to just put in another temporary named range because we'll be creating this named range with code later on. Go down here and get all of these categories, click into the name box and call it category 4, and hit enter. So we've got two named ranges on that sheet now. One is called category 4, so if we get to click into our name box, category full, there it is, and the other is called cascade. Now, well, while we're in here, we've got the category full that we just put in here, but we need the category, just the, the very short ones of them, just here. So type into there, or click into there, and highlight the range of your categories. Now, we can make this a dynamic named range, and probably would be better to do that. So here's the dynamic named range for just categories. It's called category, and we can see in here, it just simply is picking up that information. So create that dynamic named range. You'll find it on the website if you have some difficulty. Now with those three named ranges, we're able to go in and set our cascading data validation. So we'll go in to category, click data, and then data validation, choose a list, and hit the F3 key when we've clicked in the source box. And this time we'll choose category, OK, and OK. Now when we click in here, we can add the categories. And I want you to do that. Put a category in there. Now into our next box over to here, go into data and data validation once again. Find list, click in the source box, and add this formula. Now here is the formula that we're adding. I've got it highlighted there in grey. It's an offset formula. It goes to that E5 reference, which we have as the named range called Cascade. And then it matches that against the named range Category 4. Finds every one of those in Category 4, counts them, and then offsets one column. A little bit difficult to get your head around, but that's exactly what it does. So when we put it in, this is what it will look like. Data, data validation, and there it is. Equals offset cascade match H19, which is this cell here. And then it says category full, which is all of the categories 
and then it does the count and offsets one column. Right, so now if we choose hats, we only get hats. If we were to choose shoes, well, we only get shoes. Now, one thing that you'll need to remember with this, with our products, is that you must always sort your category here. You must sort this data so that all of your coats are together, all the hats, all the shoes, this must be sorted because we're going down basically and finding this, row, this amount of data here, say for coats, and then all it's doing is offsetting and grabbing this and filling your data validation with that. For hats, it goes and finds the hats here and then offsets and fills your data validation with the hats here by offsetting one column. Now what I want you to do, click into those two, right click and choose copy, then highlight all of the cells underneath all the way down to the bottom that is going to have our data validation. Right click, choose paste special and then paste validation. OK. So now all of our cells will work. Wherever we go and we choose a category shoes and then we go in, we'll find it only has shoes. So that's working beautifully for us. Now the next thing that we want to do is we can add a quantity in here. Let's say 23. We want to be able to look up the code, the unit price, the amount. I've already put the data. And of course, we want to put some data validation in here for a discount and then total in stock and check stock. We want to be able to look all of those up. How are we going to do it? Well, I'll show you how. Now, before we go any further, there's some hidden data in here, hidden information that we need you to be aware of and to see what it is doing. So go to the View tab, if you don't already see them, and click Headers. We want our headers in here. Now, scroll into B and over to G, right-click and choose Unhide. And it's unhiding for us information. You see that? Over to there. It's unhiding all four columns of information. All right? Go over here to the right-hand side, go into P and scroll across again and choose Unhide. And there's another three columns. Now, I'll explain to you very briefly what this is all about. When we're transferring the data over, we want to take with us the month, the, the number of the month, and we'll put a formula in here to do that. We want to take the date, the order number, and the company, which are all information for up, from up here that don't appear in the data set here. But we want to archive that. We want to know the month and date and order and the company for every order that goes in there. Now, over to the right, we also want to add this information to our stock list. And all we need is the date, the code, and the quantity. So we're putting in simple formulas to do that. Now, it's quite easy. What I've done to make this simple for you is if you go to the website now, you'll see this. You'll see all the formulas. Here is a picture of the area they need to go into. Then underneath it is the formula that you just Scroll over and copy and paste in. Couldn't get easier than that. Here's a picture again for the next lot. Got the headings in there and everything, and then the formulas that you paste in. They're basically VLOOKUP formulas with named ranges in them. So go and do that. What I want you to do is go in and paste the named ranges into this area here, into those three or four cells, then over into here, into these three cells, then across into these, and then into there. And when you've done that, we'll come back and I'll show you how to copy them down. So when you've copied the formulas in, all you need to do is go and highlight the formulas in that first row that you've copied. I have them all in here now. Right click and choose copy. Then go back to here, highlight the row you want to copy them to, or the range you want to copy them to, and then go right click and choose Paste Formulas. It's easy to do. So if we were to show you all the formulas in there now, this is what it would look like. I'll just go up to the formula and show formulas. So here's all the formulas that you can see. There they all are in our worksheet. Quite a lot of them, isn't there? So we'll just click out of that now and not show the formulas. So go back in now that we've done that 
and click on C, D, E and F. Right click and choose hide. We don't need to see them any longer. And we want to as well hide Q, R and S. Right click and choose hide. Now all our formulas will work as we put them in. But bear in mind that the stock in and stock check will not work properly yet because we do not have the named ranges in there. So don't pay any attention to the stock in and stock check at this stage. You're going to get inconsistent results. In our next tutorial, we'll add the code that adds the named ranges to make them accurate. Now, just before we leave this tutorial, and we're going to have another tutorial on working on the order sheet, we'll just go into the discount and add some data validation. We'll go in, choose data validation, and we'll just type in the list this time. We'll choose, choose list, and we'll just go um, 0.1 comma, 0.2 comma, all the way up to 10. And what that'll do is give us a percentage. Now we have them all in, and we can just choose a percentage, 10%. And our formulas will adjust to suit that. All right, so we've gone a long way. We can put in our customers. It'll auto automatically populate the customers for us. I won't choose cash sale. We can put in our stock. It's, everything is almost ready to go. We want to have a look at the conditional formatting. We want our calendar to work. A few things yet we want to do. And then we've got to run some macros, some VBA code from here in our next tutorial. Look, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. We've really been through some of the harder stuff. So if you think this is getting too heavy, it only gets easier from now on in. This is Trev from OnlinePCLearning.com. I thank you very much for listening to my tutorials and bye for now.